Would you like to live your best life possible, regardless of your imperfections? Discover cutting-edge tools and inspiration to let go of your limitations and expand your life beyond what you've ever imagined. On Imperfect Brilliance, we help you tap into your unique gifts and talents, uncovering and letting your brilliance shine. Join certified facilitators and coaches, Betsy McLaughlin and Kathy Williams, to delve into different areas of your life, get unstuck, and create the life that is truly possible for you. These joyful ladies have changed their lives by utilizing the tools and techniques they share with you. What if your willingness to acknowledge your brilliance is the catalyst to creating a new reality? When you stop judging you, what else can you create in your life and in the world? Join Kathy and Betsy live every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern to create magical and joyous possibilities for an hour of laughs, questions, tips, and more. We are excited to contribute and play with you. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to Imperfect Brilliance. I am your host. Betsy McLaughlin, along with my fabulous co-host, Kathy Williams. And we are so excited that you all are listening in, whether alive or in the future. We have a wonderful guest with us today. And I'll tell you a little bit about her. We welcome Jennifer Kramer Lewis to the show. So welcome, Jennifer. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you guys. Wonderful. (laughs) So a little bit about you. I love it when, um, you know, other people are talking about you. It's kind of always interesting to hear. Um, Jennifer loves to show people simple changes that they can make to drastically improve their financial welfare, which I love that, you know, and really it can be simple changes that make such a difference. So I'm really looking forward to where our conversation will go today. And she's got over 20 years in business and financing, including careers in banking, real estate sales and management, and mortgage brokerage. And she's always found it easy and natural to implement processes to heighten the productivity. (laughs) <laughs> so those skills combined with her love of people mean that financial coaching was a natural progression from working within other people's businesses. And that's such a cool, cool talent. And Jennifer's also, she's a facilitator for Wealth Creators Anonymous, a specialty program of access consciousness. She's written three best-selling books, and she's mom to two fantastic teens, who are learning early to master the language of prosperity. That in itself could be an entire show. Just I talking know, I about was just thinking right, that. right. It's about money. Yeah, we may just have to have you come back and and talk about that because that's an amazing thing that I certainly didn't have much uh, education on. You know, finances and prosperity when I was a child, or even for most of my adult life. Yeah, and it's a struggle. You know, most of us, um, you know, our parents didn't talk to us about money, you know, and I don't know if it's just a Canadian Mm -hmm. thing, but money was something that you were like not supposed to ask how much things cost or, you know, um, not supposed to ask about money or, you know, and we kept hearing, oh, well, we can't afford that, but Mm -hmm. we didn't actually have a discussion about, well, you know, we knew weren't we couldn't afford it because mom said we can't have it but also we weren't allowed to say well why can't we afford it right <laughs> oh how interesting yeah <laughs> and we definitely couldn't say oh well what could we do to afford it right <laughs> <laughs> what are the possibilities yeah what can we yes. possibilities how can we have this yeah, money was definitely a verboten subject in my household. I grew up in the U.S., so I wonder how rampant that is really across the world. Money is just yeah. one of those things that a lot of people don't talk about. It's not just a so, Canadian thing. <laughs> it's not just yeah. a Canadian thing. No, no. ma'am. <laughs> Although, you know, as I listen to people, you know, more and more I realize, wow, I was kind of the outlier because my dad – talked with us about money and investing and creating and, and um, 
Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. So um, yeah. I'm excited to see. You did come from a, sorry about that, Kathy. And, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I did come from a very capitalistic family. It was like, well, we can't afford it, but you can go out and make the money. Oh. So, um, or come to me with an offer. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely something that we learned in our family. So it was like, oh, that's okay, kind well, of cool. Yeah, if I could afford to pay for, you know, half of something or a quarter of something. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, my mom was definitely in it if I had skin in the game. Like if I was willing to, you know, hustle to have something. Um, that was something that we really did learn from, from my mom especially. Mm. Uh, that, um, you know, if you're willing to like invent a job or ask somebody for a job, um, you know, or willing to, you know, basically door knock to go babysitting or something like that, you know, so I did learn that, but, you know, the yeah. actual nuts and bolts of having a business, um, I had to teach myself and, you know, I did learn along the way, um, some not great ways of having a business and then mm -hmm. also some quite successful ways of creating and having a business. And I think that entrepreneurial spirit, I really do get that from my mom. So I thank her for that, for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and so today's topic kind of goes right in with what you're, you're talking about. And coming from the, have you ever noticed that a lot of people want to spend time with you? They're always asking you for advice and um, counsel, and then they don't actually want to pay you for those services. So today's conversation is what is something, you know, where, where can you change that? And what if being a poor healer is something you can actually unchoose? So it's how to get paid for the healing that you're already being. So where would you like to start with this juicy conversation? <laughs> yeah, well, I know you guys pretty well. And so I know that if I got to go out for lunch with you guys and got to ask you questions about some things that I could choose in my life, um, the level of awareness um, that you have, and I can acknowledge that in myself, the level of awareness that I have is pretty high. And businesses talk mm -hmm. to me. So... And people's bodies talk to me. In fact, they, they yell at me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that in and of itself is valuable. And then also just getting to be with somebody who is um, without judgment, who is just light and bright and possibility filled. That's super valuable. And so, of course, people want to go out for lunch with you if you can be that for people. You can be absolutely no point of view about what they can't create and what they can create and absolutely no point of view about where they're coming from financially and what they can create in the future. Mm -hmm. And definitely not sort of form and structure about these are the 10 easy steps that you need to take to create a profitable business, but also willing to offer advice when it's you know, when it's clear that that's what the next thing is, it's like, okay, well, cool. We need to figure out a way to talk about your business so that people can receive it. And, um, you know, so that's some advice that I do talk to people about is, you know, interviewing them about their business. What do they love about their business? And, um, you know, so when you're being that normal sort of gorgeous self of yours, it is valuable. And so that's the first step that I would say for people is to acknowledge how sort of delicious and kind it is to get to spend time with you. Mm. So <laughs> any listeners out there, just tap into that for a moment. Yeah. Uh, have you acknowledged how delicious it is to get to spend time with you? Yeah. And if there's like little yeah buts coming in, up in your mind, like, oh, yeah, but that, everybody has that. Yeah, but everybody's nice to spend time with. That <laughs> is such a crock. <laughs> <laughs> How many people have you spent time with this week even? Like, I have some amazing friends, and I'm very lucky, and I've cultivated them as well. And so, you know, back in the olden days, oh, my gosh, I used to get home 
um, from work and I just, you know, I'd have to have a good stiff drink to be normal from <laughs> people who were just awful. Wow. And, yeah. And so, you know, if you are that kind of naturally nurturing, healing kind of a person, like how do you extrapolate that out into a place where people are willing to pay you for your services? And the first That's... thing is to actually acknowledge that mm. you're fun to be with. You have lots of possibilities available for people. So, so step true. one, acknowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which I and, think you know, uh, people sometimes sorry. tend to blow off, you know, oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. Everyone can do that. And and sometimes we 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 do discount, like discount in many ways, not just like financially, but that too. Things that are easy for us. And you know, we all do the work of access consciousness and Gary Douglas who's the founder says you know would you be willing to look at what's easy for you and use that to make money right yeah. <laughs> don't discount it yeah. yeah and that's the thing when it's easy for you to you know be that healing property for people's bodies for people's businesses for people's mm -hmm. bank accounts, for people's, you know, beautiful love relationships. Um, why does it have to be free? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So everybody's going to have their own answer to that. And so maybe you could just, mm -hmm. you know, ask yourself, well, truth, why does it have to be free if it's easy for me? Right. And, you know, there's so many things that I can think of where I am happy to give somebody else money for something that they do with ease, they enjoy doing, and either I don't like doing it or I don't know how to do it or I'm not very good at it. Um, and, you know, I have, I have no problem paying somebody for their services. And so the other side of that coin is, well, then, you know, would you be willing to accept money for your talents and your capacities and your services? Yeah, totally. And so I find that people do have these blocks. Um, actually, I have a gift to give away your, to your listeners at the end. So this is our little bribe to come to the end and listen to the whole radio show. Or, you know, maybe Wonderful. You could just scroll right on ahead. But there's so much <laughs> programming, so much programming involved in money, finance, wealth, um, and then the worthiness trap. Like, are you worthy to be paid? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so just even having a look at, you know, like, where do you um, fall short on the worthiness trap? Like, are you like, oh, well, just because this is easy for me. Um, I probably shouldn't charge people very much or just because um, this client I'm excited about working for them and with them in their business or, you know, whatever it is that they would like to change. Um, do I charge less and does that actually work for you to um, to not be able to pay your bills? Um, a friend of mine, mm -hmm. actually my assistant uh, knows this lady um, uh, in her community who was just an absolute gorgeous creature like anytime you went to her house she would um she would just be that beautiful listening ear and she would she would even like you could have a bath at her house she would draw you a bath in her beautiful bathroom and and you could have like a gorgeous healing bath at her house and and mm. just change your energy and um yeah Cassie my assistant was talking to me and the big secret was that, you know, as much as she was willing to, you know, be that nurturing, gorgeous um, place where people could be, she wasn't actually willing to take any money for it. And she, um, mm. she was bankrupt. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So she was in the process of losing her home because she wasn't able wow. to take money for her services. And so, I mean, mm. obviously that's like the... You know, I mean, that's the extreme, mm -hmm. but also like what future are you creating that has money in it for you? 
And so, you know, it may not be easy for you now to start asking, wow, you know, what can I charge for my services? What services do I provide that are easy for me or that yeah. I've built up a skill set? And, you know, who's looking for that right now? And, you know, what would be fun for me to charge for those services to create a future that actually does have money in it? Mm -hmm. I love these questions, and I think it's worth going into them a little more, you know, I, you know, who is looking for that? Yeah, I, I often ask, who's looking for me? Where are they? You know, and what else? What else are they looking for that I could provide? Or where are they? Um, and what I'd really kind of like to dive into as well is, you know, what, what skills um, people have that may, they may not have acknowledged. And then also the, the pricing thing, because that can really stop people up. You know, I know you said how much, how much would I like to charge for these or, um, you know, and, and how can people who, who maybe took a bars class or a Reiki class or maybe didn't take any class, but have some or listen start yep. to explore what to charge yeah yeah well one of the things that i did very early when i had my bars facilitators license um, was i went and did a block of volunteer work for a community group that was um, working with special needs mm. people and i went in and i talked to the boss i actually knew him socially and I said, you know what, I really would like to do sort of a practicum with you guys. Um, uh, I have this process that helps, you know, stress come out of bodies and, you know, just basically, um, you know, had an idea of what he would like to do with his staff and then basically showed him how this could be something that he could do. And I offered to do it for free. And then what I did do was I did before and afters with the people, and then I showed it to their boss. <laughs> and so yeah. I was given the information by the people, like how they felt. Wonderful. Well, we've got to take our first break. You guys are listening to Imperfect Brilliance with our special guest, Jennifer. And we will be back in a couple of moments to dive further into this juicy topic. Stay with us. Free your mind with Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together, we can discover what's really going on. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I liked kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to return the kayak. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service.
Welcome back to Imperfect Brilliance, everyone. This is Kathy Williams here with my co-host, Betsy McLaughlin, and our guest, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. And we're talking about getting paid for the healing capacities that you have and be. And right now, we've started to dive into the area of charging and what to charge. And I know this is an area that often <clears throat> sticks people a little bit, you know, or causes some hesitation. So, um, Jennifer, you just shared with us how you went into this organization and um, did some bars sessions on um, their, their um, people for free. And I'm wondering, first off, what did you find? Like, what kind of changes do they have? And then where did that take you next? Yeah, yeah. So I was saying I went and did sessions. And the sessions gave me an idea about what my capacities were. I, the people were telling me what <laughs> changes they were experiencing. You know, they were more relaxed at work. They were better able to anticipate the needs of their clients because some of their clients were, um, you know, quite autistic and big. Mm. And so nonverbal autistic person with behavioral problems, that's big. <laughs> so you, you need to be pretty psychic with those people. You need to be aware of an energy change in them. And so, you know, I asked, you know, just simple questions like, you know, out of 10, how do you feel right now? You know, what's the lead thing that you're concerned about right now? And out of 10, how do you, you know, where are you with that? And so I did 30 minute sessions for them and did them back to back. And I, I think I only did maybe six to 10 sessions in a block. And so it wasn't a huge amount of time for myself, but it gave me the moxie to say, okay, well, these are the results that I'm getting. And then um, I asked myself, okay, cool. What would it be worth to me to have these results happen? And, you know, what practitioners have I been to that I felt like, you know, the results were similar. And for me, there wasn't anything similar to the bars. And I, um, you know, I'm pretty experimental. I've tried a whole bunch of different things. And um, the bars just lighten my life up so much. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was, like I said earlier, I was having to have a stiff drink when I got home to, you know, <laughs> to make myself, you know, feel normal, feel happy. And so, wow. you know, the more I could get my bars run, the better. I just wasn't even interested in, mm -hmm. you know, doing anything else when I, when I heard about the bars. And so... You know, if you can do things like that for yourself, bless you. Um, Excuse me. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> to experiment with the prices, you know, say you wanted to charge, you know, $100 for a 30 minute session. Does that feel like it's too much? Does that feel like it's not enough? Um, and, you know, all of the form and structure that people have projected at you about creating a business um, you know, all of the shoulds and all of the shouldn'ts. What if you just let that go and actually created a business that was just for you? Mm -hmm. I love that. I love yeah. that. I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy and I are so, saying the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Going into well, the, the practice of, you know, yoga therapy and working with people one-on-one -on -one for yoga um, the general message was look around at what massage therapists are charging and then charge something similar. <clears throat> and, you know, I mean, that could be good advice as long as it feels right. You know, I mean, it's like there's the, like if if we take that as, oh, yes, OK, this is what I've got to do other. Uh, um, Otherwise, you know, people won't pay me or otherwise it won't work or otherwise it's too much or too little. Um, it, it's really got to be this kind of internal compass instead of this externally directed, this is what you should do. And, um, you know, and, and all the judgments and conclusions that come along with it. No kidding. Mm -hmm. No kidding. And then how heavy is that? 
you know, when somebody <laughs> says, oh, well, here's the five or 10 easy steps for you to create a business that works for you, you know, how much question is in that? <laughs> Right. Just follow the steps. And then we wonder, well, I must not work right because the steps didn't work for me or it yeah. feels yeah. off or I couldn't motivate myself to follow all those steps or whatever it is. It's like we turn it back on ourselves like we're the dysfunctional thing instead of, well, actually, maybe those steps that are supposed to work for you don't. Yeah, like, it's not you. It's the steps. It's the staff. Well, and you know, it's definitely not a one size fits all universe. It yeah. It absolutely is not. And businesses are never <laughs> one size fits all either. You know, like even if you're really great at your job, even if you like absolutely love it, um, one of the things that can turn a job that you absolutely adore into a chore is not charging enough. Yes, I, I can so say true. from personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And would you speak a little bit more on that? Yeah, I'd love to. So if it was just for you and just for fun, how long would you like to work with someone? Like, would you like to have a 30 minute session? Is that lighter for you than a 90 minute session? And by lighter, I mean, does it make you want to like giggle and laugh? And, um, uh, you know, are you excited about, you know, having a new client every 30 minutes? Um, or are you one of those kind of people that just loves to be with people and like nurture them and like 90 minutes is like just about enough for you? Or maybe two hours is just about enough for you and you feel like, oh, if only I could spend more time with my clients. And so have a look at that and then, you know, really have a look at what, you know, other practitioners, what massage therapists are doing, what yoga, you know, therapists are doing, even like what musical therapists are doing and different kinds of beautiful therapy. And you can actually enter te energy test the different therapies and say to yourself, okay, cool. Out of 10, how much is what I do close to what this person is doing? And your body can be like, well, that's a two out of 10. You're not doing anything close to what that person's doing. And then, you know, you have a look at a musical therapist and you're like, okay, out of 10, how close is what I'm doing for people like that? And, you know, say you get an eight out of 10. You're like, okay, cool. Well, what do those people charge? Okay, cool. So out of 10, what that person's <clears throat> charging, um, you know, how is that in alignment with what future that I'm asking to create? And you'll get, oh, wow, those people are only charging $40 an hour. Well, <laughs> I'm not interested mm -hmm. in doing sessions for 20 bucks. No, thank you. Bye. And, you know, what if there was no point of view about what you charged even? Right. Now, that's an interesting one. So would you say more about that? <laughs> yeah. So um, I have a hilarious story to tell you. So um, a friend of mine is a nutritionist and she's also um, uh, a personal trainer. And um, she's, I would say she's on the genius level IQ and she's gorgeous. So, you know, <laughs> having to go to the gym and, you know, seeing her wandering around in her Lululemons and getting to work out with her is like a feast for the eyes. And you know, a feast for the senses, and she's just a lovely human being. And so this guy came mm. to her and said, um, uh, you know, I really want to look great in my tuxedo when I get married. And so, of course, he waited until the very last minute. And so I think <laughs> she had something like 30 days to work with him to, you know, make this happen. And he was, you know, considerably overweight, but also probably had, you know, a nice muscle mass hiding somewhere underneath there. And um, she said, okay, well, cool. This is what I sense that I can do for you. And she did him off a whole big plan of what they would do. They would work together every single day for 30 days. And, you know, she was willing to offer her time and her expertise. And also, you know, just the healing that she was able to be for people. Like she could have got the job done for him. And I think she said to him it would be somewhere in the range of like, 
It was under $7,000 to work with her every day for 30 days and have a nutrition plan, you know, and have her, you know, like really work with him so that he knew exactly what he was eating. Like she was really going to be all in with him Mm -hmm. for these 30 days. And so when he got this price tag of, say, 7000 I think it might have been 6800 or something like that. And uh, he was like, oh, my God, that's way too much money. I, I, there's no bloody way. I mean, I'm, I'm planning for a wedding. Um, you know, I've got all of these expenses. You know, like, uh, uh, I can't do it. <laughs> and so you've got to love social media. So something like less than 10 days later... There's pictures of him on social media or a video, and he spent $10,000 on a home theater system for his home. (laughs) (laughs) So you can't ever know what people will spend their money on. And Mm -hmm. so that, you know, making yourself wrong for somebody not choosing your services, um, well, one, it's insane. (laughs) So don't do that. And two, you know, like, who are the people who will enjoy you, who will, uh, you know, use your services, who will have value for that, and who can actually pay you? And, you know, you can talk to your business. You can say, hey, business, can you show me where my clients are today? And the business can talk back if you're willing to listen. Remember, um... This spring, I was like, where is my business want me to go? And my business was like, Russia. (laughs) It was like, oh, my God, I don't even know anybody in Russia. I don't speak Russian. That is very strange. Business, are you sure? And my business was like, Russia. And so I sent out some feelers and I contacted some people. And I taught in Russia this summer. And it was amazing. I had an amazing time. And nobody nickel and dimed me in Russia. Not one person. Yay. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, (laughs) Betsy and I both have places to go with this. All right, you go first. I will hold mine and remember it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you. I, I wanted just to talk a little bit about what you can be projecting to people. So if you have the point of view that you're charging too much, how much are other people picking up on that? As you say, you know, you were in Russia and nobody nickels and dimed you, nobody had a problem paying you for whatever. What were you presenting to them? So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I love that. I love that. Actually, it might be a good time to bring up my gift. (laughs) (laughs) So I have a gift for you guys. It's a 90-minute class, and it's called Unlocking the Incarcerations of Financial Abuse. And so you can go over to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash unlocking you, all lowercase, unlocking you, and no space in that. And uh, the ladies will put it somewhere where you can find it in the comments. Um, So the person that you can be who is free of the incarcerations of financial abuse. So financial abuse is anywhere somebody has used money in a way that diminished you. And that's also Mm -hmm. including you because there's a lot of programming in the way that we Mm -hmm. use money to diminish ourselves. And so... If we can take money out of the equation, this is the easiest way to answer your question, Betsy. What would I do if money were no object? Is a great Mm -hmm. question you can ask. And so, you know, I mean, you can write down five things that you would do if money were no object. And you can also ask yourself, if money isn't the primary currency of choice for me, how will I know that this choice is a choice that will add financial abundance to my future and so you're going to get the light and heavy tool and I'm sure these ladies have talked about the light and heavy tool before Um, Mm -hmm. heavy makes for me it makes me feel sick in the pit of my stomach I feel sort of barfy you know guilty heavy um, uh, sometimes confused and light is like makes me want to giggle makes me want to laugh makes me feel like I have bubbles in my body 
And so, you know, looking at the light and heaviness of it is another way to have a really great time with choosing things for your future. And so the energy that I was being was delight. I was so mm. delighted with the possibilities and anything that didn't feel like delight, I just didn't choose it. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about energetic priorities on this show. So um, if you guys would like to hear more of that, those are kind of guiding energies. It sounded like it sounds like delight was one of your guiding energies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's something that I've been asking a lot of questions about, like if I was willing to create, well, and I am, so knowing that I'm willing to create a life that is based on delight, you know, me being delighted with my life, and then other people coming along on the journey of delight with me, and, you know, inviting my friends to delightful experiences, inviting my clients to delightful experiences, inviting myself to more delightful experiences. <laughs> so yeah, that is one of my guiding principles. And um, yeah, um, I saw that you had Corey on the show and she does talk about energetic priorities and she's amazing at showing people that. So you allowed this to kind of um, guide you and guide you to, to Russia and, and um, just by asking questions and we talk a lot on the show about questions but one of the things I'd like to talk about a little bit more because I know for some people it's a, a kind of a foreign concept um, and then some of you guys have taken my energetic exercises for creation um, class which you can also purchase at meetkathywilliams.com forward slash pulls um, in, in which we talk a lot about communicating with your business. So would you talk a little bit more about this idea of talking with your business and asking where would you like to go or, you know, what to charge and things like that? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm sure this is something that you do cover in your information. Oh. Yes. Okay. Well, after the break. <laughs> Absolutely. We have a direction we'll be headed, everybody. So stick around and we'll be right back after this short break. Thanks for listening to Imperfect Brilliance. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living. A chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. This cat makes me make art. He's always motivating me to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. He's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Keyboard Cat, YouTube star and shelter pet. Amazing adoption stories start in shelters. Start yours today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to oh. Imperfect Brilliance, everybody. This is Kathy Williams here with my co-host, Betsy McLaughlin, and our guest today, Jennifer Kramer-Lewis. 
We're talking about getting paid for healing, for being healing, for, you know, doing sessions and, and that sort of thing. And we're headed in the direction now of communicating with your business. So this assumes that you have a business and um, maybe we even have a little different kind of perspective around what is business too. So Jennifer? Oh, yeah, I love that direction <laughs> too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So how do you get used to getting answers from the universe is the real question. Or not yeah. answers, awareness, because answers are good for 10 seconds. Awareness is good for much longer than that. And so what I taught myself how to do for my own body um, using the tools of access consciousness is I actually just put my hands on my body and I ask my body tons of questions every day. And so when I got used to asking my body questions, um, then it was easy to extrapolate that out into talking to my business. And oh, so, cool. Yeah, so the first questions that I started asking my body were just yes or no questions. Body, are we hungry? Yes or no? No. Body, are we thirsty? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, body, would we like coffee, water, coffee? Okay, cool. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, it's kind of like um, communicating with, you know, an 18-month-old in the sense like the the more simple that you can make it it's like is it a yes or is it a no and you'll definitely know if it's a no and so you can <laughs> experiment and go against your own awareness if you want to <laughs> but in my life it's become quite easy to communicate and get an easy yes or no from my business an easy yes or no from my body and so would you be willing to experiment with that and just maybe put your hand on your heart and your belly button and connect with your body and say, hey, body, you know, is it a yes or a no to this? And then your body, um, your business is quite connected with your body, especially if you're out there doing um, healing sessions on people. Your body is definitely um, a factor there. And the more you include your body in your business, uh, the more awareness that you can have about what choices could be profitable for your business because your body is the one who benefits from you having money and abundance. Hmm. I like the way you make it really simple and go from, <laughs> okay, body, you know, what would you like? Water. And then as we build confidence, we can go into things that maybe are a little more subtle. Yeah. And then the next thing that I would do, once you get used to asking your body the yes, no questions, um, something that I have taught myself how to do is um, I get an energetic reading quite easily if I ask out of 10. So I'm like, okay, out of 10, how profitable is this choice for me? And oh. I'll know. It's like, oh, two. All right, not my <laughs> choice then. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like, without going into form and structure, you can actually play with the energies of things quite easily by just asking questions. Um, out loud is very important. And so if you're worried about, you know, looking like a crazy lady talking to yourself out loud, you may have to wander into the bathroom and shut the door and ask yourself some questions with the fan on. <laughs> then I mean your family does get used to you asking questions out loud quite easily or at least I've noticed that you know, Tom's very used to me asking questions and so are my kids so I yes. love this conversation I really do I'm so grateful for it and I remember when I first started charging for sessions um, I had a lot of hesitation about like should I, could I even charge, accept money and would people be willing to pay me for the sessions? And so I just, you know, I said, well, let me start. And, you know, that question, would I be willing to pay other people? And I was like, yes. I mean, that's actually how I found out about it. And I did. I went and paid somebody else for a session. So as, you know, and it's definitely for me, it was a muscle and something I, I practiced. And, you know, then the first time it was, 
it was really fun to accept money, receive money for something that I did that I enjoyed. And then as time got on, I, I always asked the question, you know, like, is it still fun to receive this much money? And then when it wasn't fun anymore, that's when I raised my prices. And I asked a bunch of questions like, okay, what would be fun to receive? And I went from there. And, you know, so just be, and I'd love to encourage our listeners, just because you decide on $1 amount today doesn't mean that you have to charge that same dollar amount tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, and if you're and playing with the energy of it, I'm sorry, you know, just just to say, you know, playing in the energy of it and what is fun every day and even every session. So what were you going to add sessions. to that? Yeah, exactly. You yeah. picked up on what I was going to say. You know, like, is mm-hmm. it, does it actually make financial or energetic sense to you? Like, does it make you feel excited to charge the same for every single session that you're doing or is Mm -hmm. that a little form and structure too so Mm -hmm. you know if somebody's coming um to you you know with uh grief and loss um would you charge the same for that person than you would for somebody who um you know is asking for you know um some pain to come out of their body or does it actually feel different enough that it requires different charges? Mm-hmm. And you can ask yourself, okay, cool, out of 10, um, you know, if I charge 250 for a half an hour out of 10, where does that lie for me? And if you get like a, I always say, if you get an eight and under, it's a no. <laughs> You know, because you want your life to be 80% fun at least, if not 100% fun. And so business is allowed to be fun too if you're willing to step into a realm where business is always fun for you. And so, you know, just ask yourself, cool. So out of 10, if I charge, you know, this amount, say, you know, start at whatever feels like a stretch for you. You know, if $100 for a half an hour session feels like a stretch for you, then you can ask, well, wow, you know, like... If I charge $100 for this half an hour session out of 10, where is that? And, you know, if you get a six, you're like, okay, cool, more or less. And if your body's like, less, you're like, okay, cool. If I charge $50 for a half an hour session, where's that? And if the energy pops back up again to a nine or a 10 or an eight, nine or a 10, then, you know, that may be where you could start. Mm Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you can always you can always have, you know, special VIP packages and things like that for your clients as well. Oh, and I do. You know, like I when people come and, you know, their energy is like a 9 or a 10 out of 10 for me to work with them and, you know, I take them through a discovery process, you know, we talk about everything that they would like to create. Um, you know, over, say, a six-month or a 12-month period. And, you know, we look at absolutely everything. And then, you know, if it's super juicy for me to offer them, you know, a VIP price or a VIP package, then I always do. And if it's not super juicy for me to do that, then it's pretty good indication that the client is not an ideal client to work with. And so how many times have we made money, the primary currency, and we're willing to work with anybody so that we can pay our bills. But, you know, what if there is abundance in all things? Mm -hmm. And if, you know, by saying yes to the clients that aren't fun to work with, you're actually, you know, filling up your schedule with that. And there's no room Mm -hmm. for the clients who are delicious. I love this conversation because I remember... It was several years ago. It was actually a while ago um, when my younger son was very small. A woman asked me to work with her three times a week. Um, And this was doing private yoga with her. And so we did. And I gave her a really good deal because it was three times a week. Um, 
And we did that for over a year. And then there was a point at which I was like, wow, I gave her such a great deal. And and it's kind of wearing on me now to, to I was going I was even going to our house, which is very close. But it just it was time for me to choose a, a higher price. And I had so much hesitation about doing that, really, like, uh, she's not going to like that or, you know, and I think by this time we were actually down to twice a week, but I, it was still the same fee and, and I was still going to her house and, you know, it took me a while. It took me probably six weeks or something to really just pull the trigger and be like, you know what, I offered this price that's actually like <laughs> a fraction of what I usually charge and it's time for me to raise the price. And um, she went away. But that week, I got someone who was willing to pay me like uh, more than double what she was paying me. And so in one hour, I was making what I made mm. in, in over two hours with that other client. So sometimes it really is time to let go of what mm. doesn't light you up and make way. It's it's kind of like clearing your clearing space in your closet for really awesome clothes to come in instead of the shirt you like. All right. You know, it's not a bad shirt, but it's like, yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I call it clearing your energetic porch. Like how many people are standing (laughs) on your front porch right now, blocking the view you can't see out and people who are looking for you can't see in. You know, and that's so true no matter what your business is, you know, whether you are doing any kind of healing work or coaching or in, even in the, biz, the, the business world, in real estate or mortgage banking or, you know, consulting that and it's such a beautiful example of exactly what Jennifer was talking about, Kathy, that you just used, where literally, you know, something different and and more substantial for you showed up as soon as you were willing to say, Hey, this isn't working for me anymore. And you know, then that person has the choice to stay or go. Um, And I've had that happen as well, you know, when it just wasn't fun anymore to be, and I knew that it was time to raise my prices. And I also knew this one person probably was not going to continue coming. And I was, I was okay with that. Because it had gotten to the point where it was no longer fun. So if it's no longer fun, and if you're just doing it for the money, what are you turning your back on? You know, and what other possibilities are there that, you know, you're um, closing the door to? Yeah. Well, and it yeah. can be a friendship, too. Um, mm-hmm. I remember I had a friend who uh, kept asking me, oh, well, what would you do? Um, for my business, what would you do for my business? And so, you know, I'd give her, you know, a 15 minute consultation, basically every time she called me. And, you know, so it wasn't a two way street friendship. It wasn't Mm. a one plus one equals Mm. infinite possibilities friendship. It was, you know, Jennifer (laughs) giving away business consult friendship. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) And so finally, I had the cojones to be able to say, um, Mm -hmm. you know, we've talked about your business more than once. So if you would love to book a discovery call and, you know, we can tape it and um, uh, I can take you through a process that will help you discover what it is that you can do to get people into your Mm -hmm. mailing list some, you know, things that we can do to your website, you know, um, some stuff that we can do to get your message right out into the world. And, um, yeah, she was pissed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really. <laughs> and so um, I'm actually, I don't know that I'm her friend anymore. <laughs> mm. So, you know, it's what we are willing to um, uh, make I really like to say here you know if you can allow yourself to be the valuable product so many people can choose mm-hmm. you and some people won't and yeah what if that's true. okay too you know what true. if that actually makes more room for beautiful contributory friendships to show up 
you know, other than this person standing on my porch wanting, you know, business consultation for free, you know, now mm-hmm. that she's not on my porch anymore. Um, there's been so many beautiful people that I've had the pleasure of working with. And, um, you know, so sometimes when one person goes away, it makes room for 40 people to come into your life. Yeah. So true. It's so true. And, you know, if you're willing to value you, um, you know, and you're putting that energy out, what will you attract back? And, Mm -hmm. you know, at the very beginning, you said, where do you fall through on the worthiness trap? You know, and what future are you creating? So what future are you creating by the choices you're making? Yeah. Yeah. And does that future have money in it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, some days you might make some silly mistakes and you're like, okay, wow, is that creating a future with money in it? And you're like, oh, shit, it's not. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for being here with us, Jennifer. The time passed so quickly. It really did. How can people find you? Oh, you can find me all over the World Wide Web. If you Google me at Jennifer Kramer with a C, Lewis, L-E-W-I-S. And you can find me at my website at accessholistic.com. Thank you. Thank so you so much, much Jennifer. Have a wonderful week, everyone. And you can always find us on iTunes or SoundCloud or over at imperfectbrilliance.com. Thanks a bunch, everyone. Have a great Aloha. week. <laughs>